The document can. I'll be back. I can. Yep. It is now 7.02 p.m. and I will call the January 21st, 2014 meeting of the City Council to order. Could we please have a moment of silent meditation? Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Brown, would you come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance as quickly as you can. Yeah. Thank you. We have the uh, roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Here. Council Member Brown. Here. Council Member Katati. Here. Council Member Davis. Here. Council Member Moffitt. Here. Council Member Shule. And C Mayor Bell is requesting an excuse absence. Properly second that we grant our wonderful mayor an excuse absence. Um, Madam Clerk, would you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. 
Now, we have listed one ceremonial item. We were not sure how the weather would be tonight, so we've asked that Ms. Becton come uh, the next council meeting uh, when we will present the resolution memorializing Joseph William Anderson Becton, Jr., who was at one juncture the Director of Human Relations uh, for the City of Durham. So we're holding that. And uh, while, while I'm talk, speaking of holding, um, because of the weather conditions, uh, we're going to be holding um, speaking moments to a minimum tonight um, because of my concern for our staff and actually for myself because I live way out north and it is really snowing and sleeting uh, out there. And I unless there is some ob objection from uh, my colleagues. Now, So I'm going to three things I'm going to touch on very briefly. The first is, is that, as the Mayor Pro Tem said, the weather is turning bad. Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission is meeting upstairs, and a lot of them ride their bikes even in weather like this. So please be careful, both for yourself and for others, as you leave tonight. The second is, is that I want to commend uh, the police response to um, the, um, the violence on Sunday night. Um, three times this has happened, and so far in those three times, We've had one reported minor injury, which I think speaks well to their training and to their restraint. And finally, I, I just want to just say that um, the, this past holiday was a great one. I, en I enjoyed very much the Martin Luther King uh, commemorative activities I did, including a march that had several hundred people on it and was very peaceful in keeping with um, his, uh, his, uh, his push for nonviolence. So a number of my colleagues, Mr. Davis was there, uh, Mayor Pro Tem was there, uh, Mr. Shul was there, and um, it was a great event. Thank you, um, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, sir. Mr. Davis, you have <laughs> I one heard, minute. I heard you say if you uh, stick the, to it. I'll it's try fine. real hard. <laughs> um, I, many of us know that we lost a giant in the civil rights community a couple of, um, a few days ago, with Franklin McCain's death. Uh, there was a, a very nice, well, I don't know if obituaries can be nice, but a, a good, a well-written obituary that appeared in the New York Times. Um, and that obituary made two references uh, to Durham, North Carolina. Uh, I think you have it on the screen there. The first one comes in the first column, and it talks about the fact that before Greensboro in 1960, there was a major sit-in in Durham, North Carolina in 1957. Um, many people around the world now know that Durham was ahead of Greensboro, although we're not in any kind of race, uh, but Durham was there in 1957, and many of us from Durham know uh, that that reference was to the Royal Ice Cream City. Um, I thought it would be wonderful, since that reference appeared in the New York Times, which is an international paper, that we allow this audience as well as the council and the folks at home to recognize that one of those people who was in that sit-in is with us today and that is Virginia Williams. She was one of the Royal Seven. So I would like to ask her if she would just stand right now. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen, for uh, all your work. Madam Pro Tem, uh, there, there is another piece in that very same article uh, over toward the um, right-hand side of that column. There is a reference to a famous documentary that has been aired by PBS, um, and the person who was mainly responsible for that documentary and many other documentaries, including Durham, a self-portrait, uh, is Dr. Steve Channing. And he, too, is in the audience, so I'd like to give recognition to him. Um, so I just want to let us know uh, that all of us recognize that there are outstanding, as you say all the time, great things going on in Durham and great people who are here as our residents. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Because only great things can happen if great things, great people make them happen. Thank you very much.
No priority items this evening. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. No priority items. No items. Mayor Pro Tem, yes. I'm very sorry to do this, but I do want to take a moment. When we're talking about the weather, to keep in mind that we also have a lot of city employees out helping make the city safe tonight, and I just want to express my appreciation for all those people as well. Thank you, sir, for saying that. There, I don't know what we would do without them. They do the work. Now we will move to the consent agenda. Uh, these are items that we uh, voted on without uh, controversy <laughs> during our work session, but uh, items can be pulled from the consent agenda by any council member or uh, someone in the audience. So I will go to the consent agenda and, and read them, and I do know that one item uh, has been pulled. Uh, that is item five. First item is item one, approval of city council minutes. Item two, 2013 municipal primary and municipal city elections, Durham County Board of Elections. Item three, Workforce Investment Act, dis dislocated workers' funds contract between the city of Durham and Educational Data Systems Incorporated. Item four, Workforce Inve Investment Act contract between the city of Durham and educational data systems of Dearborn, Michigan. Wow. Item five, ordinance to change parking fees, and that item has been pulled, and we will hear that at the end of the GBA uh, public hearings. Uh, those are all of the consent agenda items, and I will entertain a motion to accept them. Oh, you second. It's been moved and properly second. Madam Clerk, would you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. <coughs> Going back to our public hearings, the first item is item six, um, public hearing on proposed contract between Argos <laughs> Therapeutics Inc. and the City of Durham regarding incentives for capital investment within the city limits. I will open the public hearing and ask if there are any questions or comments from city council members. Yes, sir. Mr. Mark. Oh, well, Kevin, we're going to limit you to um, five minutes okay. or less. Thank you very much. Good evening, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, uh, members of the City Council, staff, and residents and businesses of Durham. I'm Kevin Dick with the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, and I'm here this evening to present a proposed economic development incentive agreement between the City of Durham and Argos Therapeutics Incorporated. Um, given the weather, I will be brief in my comments, and I won't even go through um, the, the entire uh, PowerPoint presentation, but merely mention some of the highlights of this project. Uh, before I do that, I do want to bring your attention to an item um, that was at your seats that reflects um, some slight changes uh, to the item that were made um, after the work session um, after uh, and, and, and in response to some of the questions that arose. And basically what those changes were um, were a few. Number one, um, the net new tax, excuse me, the net tax revenues that were uh, reported at the work session over a 10-year period were um, 1.77 million. Those are now 1.69 million. Um, also, the uh, number of jobs to be created, this, this, um, as the uh, proposed expansion um, has sort of evolved over the last few months, this um, number of net jobs actually uh, is going up uh, between, or slated to go up, in the three-year period after um, a possible council approval from 118 jobs to 178. And so um, that is actually a positive change uh, related to the project. This economic development incentive agreement uh, would be for capital investment. Um, the payout, uh, the proposed payout would be $600,000 um, uh, over a seven-year period. Uh, the uh, 
dollars would come from incremental tax revenue, so um, there would be no money paid out until the building, which is slated to be um, off Alexander Drive in uh, Southeast Durham, is complete, and until all of the slated jobs um, are, well, until the building is complete, and then the payouts would be over time commensurate with the job creation that it's also supposed to be over that time period. And so that the city is not at any risk um, because there are these condition precedents. A few other condition, condition precedents include the fact that the company would enter into a workforce development plan that would uh, basically provide a framework by which they would recruit uh, possible applicants from the Durham Career Center. This would not necessarily be their only source of recruitment, but it would be a source of recruitment. Another stipulation is that they would enter into a Durham-based business plan so that their uh, general contractor or the developer uh, involved would at least uh, make a good faith effort to try to recruit uh, local Durham firms. Uh, Argos uh, is a very um, civically minded company. Um, currently they employ 90 workers, 25 to 30 percent of those are Durham residents. Uh, they recruit talent from local universities and the community college system. They do have employees uh, currently from NCCU's Bright program. Um, they are very community focused, as I said. They conduct an annual food drive for Durham and Eastern North Carolina food banks. Um, and to give a little bit of information about the type of work Argos does, uh, they are a biopharmaceutical company uh, focused on the development and commercialization of treatments for uh, cancer and other infectious diseases. Um, again, as I stated in summary, $600,000 payout over seven years. The city would still um, net uh, over $1 million in tax revenues uh, over a 10-year period. Um, and this uh, economic development incentive agreement would allow the city to retain a company that uh, is focused in several of the key industries which we covered, including biopharmaceuticals, manufacturing, and research and development. The jobs to be created um, are a wide variety. They include administrative jobs, research and development, uh, manufacturing and quality assurance, um, as well as sales, marketing, and license, licensing. So there's a wide variety of uh, Durham residents that could be recruited to fill these jobs. Um, with that, I'll close my presentation. I would add that there are representatives from um, Argos here tonight that uh, may wish to address the, the council if that's uh, the council's pleasure, and I'm happy to take questions. Other questions from any of my colleagues? Mr. Sheehan. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to say that uh, it's great to hear that job total going up. And um, I was really just want to congratulate our staff for the fact that we, we have the, uh, that the county is, is uh, putting in as much as we are. I think it's, this is progress. And I uh, appreciate the county doing that. I appreciate our staff, Kevin, you all for uh, making this happen. So thank you very much. And also thank you for your providing those answers to the work session questions. incentive of the city by uh, four times uh, what we intend to put in over four times. Thank you uh, for your work on this, Kevin. Thank Someone you. from the chamber also signed up. Uh, Ted, you have uh, two minutes. Um. I will go under two minutes, I swear. Uh, good evening. Uh, well, I'm Ted Connor with the Durham Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Cora Cole McFadden and the members of the Durham City Council. I'd like to thank also Randall, Randall Goller with Argos Therapeutics who is joining us here tonight. Uh, thank you for being here, Randall. Uh, I'd also like to recognize Beth Payne from Durham Technical Community College and Dr. Leanne Ye from North Carolina Central University's Bright Center. These two representatives be working with Argos to uh, meet their workforce training and education needs. The great thing is this is primarily uh, a very mixed-use project in terms of having a lot of R&D, but also this is primar primarily going to be an increase in their production capability, so it could be adding a lot of jobs for Durham residents. But I should also want to add that Argos Therapeutics uh, is at the precipice of bringing innovative personalized medical treatments to the market. This is a model that uh, tailors medicines to human patients. In this case, Argos uses the patient's own cells and modifies them to create antigens to attack renal cell metastatic carcinoma, or kidney cancer. So it's a whole different approach, and it's uh, 
taking place here in Durham, North Carolina, which is incredibly uh, exciting. Other diseases that might be targeted by the company's methodology include other cancers, H HIV, and lupus. And the new building that is proposed can be expanded to accommodate other production lines to treat these uh, other uh, treatment options. So I think we'll hopefully see other uh, expansions in the future, thus creating tremendous possibilities for Argos and for Durham, North Carolina. And simply said, Argos Therapeutics is a leader in developing personalized patient medical treatments. The Durham Chamber in Durham is proud to have them stay here in Durham, which I hope. There's competition elsewhere from this country uh, and outside our country for this company. We'd like to see them stay here with your support tonight. Thank you. I was brief as I Thank you. was promised. Thank you, Ted. That, that, was, uh, that was right under two minutes. Now, with the individuals from August stand out, we would at least like to recognize your presence if you're here um, and to, th and to uh, thank you for loving Durham. Mayor Yes, sir. I just want to take a brief moment and just um, say that these are the kinds of jobs and the kinds of projects that we should be incentivizing. Um, I think this is a really fine use of public capital, so thank you. It's not registering us. I need to probably reset. It's not registering um, Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. All in favor, let it be known by the sign aye. <laughs> Opposes have the same right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Did you get that recorded? <laughs> okay. Ms. Meta Pro Tim, can you turn your mic on? Turn your mic on. One, three. Thank you. I'm sorry. I got carried away, I guess. Do I need to go back through that? I'm fine. Okay. Pat? Would Thank you, you like Madam Mayor Pro Tim and members of Council. Pat Young with the Planning Department. I uh, first can certify for the record that all public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with law and affidavits are on file with the Planning Department to that effect. Um, the item before you requests three separate actions, utility extension agreement, a zoning map change, and an annexation. And these are associated with approximately 14.89 acres at the uh, southeastern, um, <coughs> excuse me, near the corner of Barbie Chapel Road and Farrington Mill Road, known as Montclair Phase Two in Southwest Durham. If all three items are approved, up to 24 single family housing units could be developed. Um, if approved, the utility extension agreement would allow the applicant to serve the development with city water and sewer service. The Public Works Department has conducted an analysis and found no adverse impacts to the utility system and no off-site improvements being required. Um, an annexation petition, if approved, would bring the property into Durham city limits. Uh, fiscal impact analysis was conducted by the Budget Management Services Department and projected uh, estimated revenues would exceed estimated expenditures uh, very shortly after annexation. And finally, um, the initial zoning is being requested, a planned development residential 2.00 and RR or rural residential for the subject property, um, which is consistent with the comprehensive plan as noted before, that would allow up to 24 uh, single family housing units. Uh, please note and let the record reflect there is a typographical error in attachment 12, which is the proposed uh, annexation ordinance. The correct effective date if passed should be March 31st, 2014 rather than March 31st, 2013. Uh, staff recommends council approve the extension agreement, voluntary annexation, and initial zoning for Montclair 2. The Planning Commission recommended approval of the initial zoning by a vote of 11 to 0 at its meeting of November 12th, 2013. I'll be happy to take any questions. Are there any questions before I open the public hearing? If not, I will open the public hearing. I have uh, two individuals who have 
uh, signed up to speak. Uh, one proponent, Jared Eatons, and an opponent, Michael Henning. Uh, I will give each of you three minutes. Is that sufficient, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, good evening, Jared Edens with Edens Land Corp. I'm here representing my clients, uh, David Weekly Homes. I appreciate Pat's summary of the project. I'm only going to touch on a, a couple of items in my three minutes here. Um, this is phase two for Montclair. As you may recall, City Council approved phase one of this project in February of last year, uh, which included 53 single family homes. Uh, since that time, uh, phase one has been approved, site plan approved, and construction will begin in the next month or so on phase one. Uh, you may recall that phase one also included a regional pump station that's actually sized to serve a much larger basin. Uh, this Montclair phase two is located <laughs> uh, inside that drainage basin to the pump station. As Pat said, that uh, we are requesting something that conforms to the comprehensive plan, which is two units an acre. Uh, we had a neighborhood meeting back in November. Uh, we did not have any opposition at the Planning Commission meeting where we received unanimous approval. There are two specific items that I want to touch on. Um, uh, we realized we saw from the staff report that the rezoning will result in additional three students to the Durham school system. Uh, my clients are willing to help offset some of this cost. Uh, so we, what we are offering tonight is to contribute $1,500 to Durham County Schools, and uh, that's $500 per additional student. That payment will be made prior to the first issuance of a CO for phase two of the project. Uh, one other item I wanna talk about, uh, we were approached last uh, week by Mr. Heining, uh, one of our neighbors, um, about a request to construct a chain link, chain link fence along our common property line uh, between our property and Mr. Heining's. Uh, my clients are really not interested in doing that. We don't think that a, that a chain link fence would really, um, would, would really do anything. Uh, I know Mr. Heining's trying to prevent people from trespassing onto his property. Um, our, our issues with that is one, a, a fence won't work, uh, as you, you can climb over fences and you can walk around fences. And uh, two, there is, there is an item, there's a mechanism in place in Durham for trespassing and it's called law enforcement. Uh, so if we, if we fenced every property line in Durham where there was the potential for someone to cross over onto an adjacent property, then, then we would just have fences everywhere. So what my client is offering up in lieu of a fence is a 25 foot undisturbed buffer between along our common property line between our property and Mr. Heining. Uh, we feel that a 25 foot buffer would, would be more valuable to Mr. Heining uh, and as well as our residents. Uh, this is wider than the 10-foot buffer that the code currently requires, so it's an additional 15 feet. Uh, we're offering that up tonight. I believe uh, Pat has the PIN numbers from Mr. Heining's property uh, so that we can write it up accordingly. But um, I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. You have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Um, my name is Michael Heining. Together with my wife, Deborah, we live at 8118 Farrington Mill Road. And we are developing a 12 plus acre family farm. We have a couple of ponds on it. We have over 50 fruit trees. We have blueberries, raspberries, huckleberries, you name it. Uh, and everything that goes along with the farm. And we share about a thousand linear feet of space a property line with the development um, and what we're called I believe is an attractive nuisance and um, this is a safety concern uh, we supported phase one of this development and we did it because of Barbie Chapel Church that church was not able to grow it needed land and this phase one allowed that to happen so we were happy to do that but uh, Phase two will double the number of homes. And I can put up a no trespass sign. I don't think that's gonna keep the kids out. What we're worried about is uh, an accident. Pulling some child out of the pond or fixing up a cracked head when they fall out of a fruit tree. And 25 feet is less the distance from here to that uh, sign right there, that wall. That's not much. 
Um, and uh, they don't have to put the fence, but if they don't, I think twice the number of houses is twice the number of children, and I think they're gonna come across onto that farm, and I just don't wanna take that chance. And so without the fence, I'd recommend that you not approve this. Thank you. Are there others who wish to speak on this item? Madam Mayor Pro Tem, if I might yes, quickly, um, we have, we did, we're able to evaluate the uh, proposed proffers that were offered tonight by the applicant. We can accept both with one m minor modification. The timing mechanism on the payment to Durham Public Schools must be prior to the first final plat. Other than that, we can accept them as proposed by the applicant. So Mr. Edens, you are prepared to comply with that. I need to hear you say something. Yeah. Uh, come to the mic, make sure we pick that up. Yes, sir. prior to the final plat is fine. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I want to raise the issue that uh, Mayor Bell mentioned. Uh, but, and unfortunately, as you know, he could not be here tonight, and that's the uh, use of vinyl siding. Oh, that's just the... That's the next, I'm sorry, there are three items, sorry. Let's see if it's working, okay. I, I, I wanna thank Mr. Heine for coming out tonight and uh, speaking on this. I, um, I, the, I, I understand your concerns and your issues. I, ha I have a hard time. I'm, I'm still struggling with whether or not fencing a thousand feet there is the right thing to do. I know it is for you, and I, but I just wanted to appreciate you for coming out and speaking to us tonight. We have a motion to. Move it's been moved and properly second. Madam Clerk, would you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. The next item is item eight, comprehensive plan amendment, Meadows and South Point two. Um, case A13007. Patrick? Thank you again, Madam Mayor Pro Tem and members of Council, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, the applicant in this case is Meadows Land Investment LLC. They're requesting to amend the future land use map for approximately 46.9 acres at the southeast corner of NC 54 and Barbie Road uh, from its current designations of office and commercial to low medium density residential. Uh, staff has determined this request meets the four criteria for plan amendments outlined in the UDO and staff recommends approval of this request. Uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval by a vote of 13 to 1 at its November 12, 2013 meeting. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions by my colleagues on the council? If not, I will open the public hearing. I have one person who has signed up to speak and that is, where's George? Mr. George Bryan. George, you have. I am. Well, unless there is a card, I don't, I don't, I don't see that for number eight. Um, George, you have. Uh, I don't think we have any opponents. Uh, so, George, I'll give you two minutes, uh, please. Well, well, you can, you signed up for nine. Well, eight must be still over there because I definitely don't have it. George, please. Yeah, he can speak. You, you can speak. Can I call you when George finishes? Good evening. 
Madam Mayor Pro Tem and Council Members, my name is George Bryan and I reside at 6505 Hunters Lane in Durham. I am here tonight on behalf of the Hunters Wood neighborhood. The neighborhood had requested from the beginning that the applicant place a residential land use designation on the property under consideration if he was going to propose a residential development. The applicant is requesting a low medium density land use designation. We thank the applicant for listening to us and we support his request. Thank you. Now, Mr. Spalding, what can you add to that? <laughs> you don't want us Ma not Ma to approve. Madam Mayor Pro Tem and, and council members, uh, what I add to it is we thank the uh, neighborhood <laughs> and thank the council, uh, the commissioners and the staff. Thank you, sir. Are there other citizens who would like to speak on this item? If not, the matter is back before the council. It's been moved and properly second. Um, I need to close the public hearing. All right, let me close the public hearing and the matter is back before the council. I'll move it. Okay. Madam Clerk, would you open the vote? Close the vote. Thank you. It passes six to zero. Thank you, sir. The next item is item nine, zoning map change matters at South Point to KC 130020. Patrick again. Thank you again, Ms. May uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem and members of council. Uh, the case before you minutes at South Point two is a request to change the zoning uh, designation of 46.9 acres, the same property that was considered in the previous item, located in the southeast quadrant of Barbie Road and NC 54 from its current designation of rural residential or RR and office institutional to, um, to, to allow for a, a maximum density of, uh, excuse me, a maximum uh, residential development of 185 units of any type. Um, and the applicant is requesting um, a PDR zoning designation. This request is consistent with the future land use designation of the comprehensive plan. There are a number of text, graphic, and design commitments associated with this request. These are detailed in your staff report. Um, I will summarize several of them. Uh, water aeration measures for stormwater facilities are committed. A 100-foot natural, natural buffer to adjacent properties. Dedication of additional right-of-way along NC-54. Uh, installation of additional asphalt along NC-54 for a bicycle lane. Um, the commitment of a bus pullout and concrete pad and shelter and roadway improvements at the site entrances along NC-54 and Barbie Road. Uh, staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other adopted policies and ordinances. And the Planning Commission recommended approval at its November 12, 2013 meeting by a vote of 13 to 1. I'll be happy to take any questions. Are there any questions from my colleagues? If not, I will open the public hearing. I have this. Uh, Mr. Bryan and Mr. Spalding, Attorney Spalding, in that order. Let George go first, so you can say what you said before. <laughs> Good evening again. I'm still George Bryan, and I still reside at 6505 Hunters Lane in Durham. I'm here tonight on behalf of the Hunters Wood neighborhood. The neighborhood had requested from the beginning that the applicant use a residential zoning if he was going to propose a residential development. The applicant is requesting a PDR 4.718 zoning. Again, we thank the applicant for listening to us and we support his request. Overall, we think that the applicant's present proposal is considerably improved over his previous proposal. Some highlights include lower density, less traffic, townhomes rather than apartments, owner-occupied dwellings rather than rental, no storage units or other commercial component, additional buffer on the perimeter, and aerated stormwater ponds. As I indicated in an earlier message to you, we do have a concern about a proposed driveway connection. Durham staff has insisted that the applicant provide a full access driveway onto Barbie Road. We believe that the driveway location together with the limited sight distances on Barbie Road, make the full access driveway on Barbie Road hazardous, 
particularly for making left turns out of and into the proposed development. We further believe that the right in, right out driveway access on the Barbie Road that was originally proposed by the applicant is a much safer alternative. It is our understanding that the initially proposed right in, right out access on the Barbie Road was acceptable to NCDOT. We ask that council direct staff to re-examine the need for a full access driveway on the Barbie Road. Furthermore, if a full access driveway is the only alternative, then we ask that warning signage be posted to help mitigate the hazard. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Alden, you have uh, the same amount of time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and members of the council. Again, my name is Ken Spaulding. I represent the applicant. Uh, we would like to thank Mr. Bryan and the many neighbors that have met with us over the many, many months as it relates to this project and development. They have helped us to come forward with a much better plan, as they pointed out. Uh, we do not have as much density. The apartments have been changed to townhomes that the residents wanted. Uh, we did file the initial application without any entrance or exits onto Barbie Road. Uh, the planning staff directed and indicated that uh, what we have in there at present is what uh, they have required us to do, and we followed that, uh, that requirement. Uh, again, it was pointed out no public storage or gas station. Uh, the staff has recommended approval. The planning commission overwhelmingly recommended approval, and we would respectfully request your approval as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Spall. And by the way, I just found your other card. Mm -hmm. Out of courtesy, I'll, I don't want people to think you were not being honest. For Mr. Spalding, Ms. Gattati. Actually, my question is for staff. I wonder if members of the Durham DOT could address the concern on the right in, right out intersection. Uh, Bill Judge with Transportation. We are aware, and NCDOT is aware of Mr. Bryan's concern about site distance. Um, we looked at it, and we believe there is adequate site distance. Part of the concern has to do with um, the site obstruction or the vertical alignment is actually to the um, left as you'd be exiting. So right in, right out really would not address that because you would still need to look to your left as you're exiting the site in order to have adequate site distance. Um, so we believe there is adequate site distance, but regardless, prior to um, them getting final construction approval, if this is approved, they will have to um, demonstrate and document that that site distance, including any improvements that NCDOT requires, whether that's uh, warning signs or any of those other measures. Are there any other questions? I had um, okay, one Cattati. other point, okay. and I was just trying to scroll through and find this piece, but um, the mayor had expressed a concern about vinyl siding and was wondering if it was possible to have that siding option struck from the design elements. <coughs> Can staff remind me exactly where that is? I thought it was in the table, but. Y yes, the um, Councilwoman Katati, the design elements as currently proposed do allow, explicitly allow vinyl as a, an allowable uh, material w w we would accept. We could enforce uh, a voluntarily offered proffer to limit or restrict the materials. Okay, thank you. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, uh, they would uh, go along with the removal of that from the uh, design guideline. Thank you. What, are, what will you have there? To, to remove the uh, vinyl uh, committed element or vinyl guideline aspect there, okay. siding. So, uh, okay. Our preference would be that vinyl be identified as a prohibited material rather than just removing it from the list of potential materials because the way the, the list is written it, it it's perfectly fine just to strike the word vinyl from the committed element yep. well. come on Jim uh, Jim Anderson uh, applicant uh, 204 Edgewater Circle Chapel Hill I just wanted to uh, make sure it was vinyl siding that was being struck and that vinyl windows, for example, would be appropriate still.
Mr. Spaulding, were you going to speak? George, could you come up and speak to the conversation you had with the mayor? Yes, ma'am. George stands the out with Stuart. Um, I think his concern was the use of final siding, metal or vinyl siding as a material, just the siding itself. And so what we're willing to do, and I, we have, I think it's vinyl, I can't remember if it's vinyl and metal or it's just vinyl siding in our design commitments. Uh, so we would strike that or we would prohibit the use of, of vinyl siding in the project. So that would be stricken from our, from our uh, from our design commitments. Instead, it would be hardy plank type siding. Right, it's a cementatious okay. uh, right. siding. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just want to make sure. Mr. Shule. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Looks like you all are, uh, this uh, project would add one student to Durham Public Schools, a small impact, but I was wondering if you all had any uh, thoughts about mitigating that. The impact would be one student, and I've talked to uh, to develop about it and they would uh, proffer the $500 uh, payment in lieu of the, or in regard to the one student difference that they will make. Just one point of clarification, that would have to be at the time of site plan approval. So it's at the time point. of site plan approval. Thank you. Are there any other questions or concerns that my colleagues might have? Well, the matter is back before you. Um, and I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion on this item. It's been moved in proper second. Madam Clerk, would you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes 6 to 0. The item that was pulled uh, from the consent agenda was pulled by William Ariel and Kate Dobbs Ariel. I'll give each of you two minutes. I yield my time to co No, we're not yielding tonight. You can speak or he can, you know, he has two minutes. I have, a, I have a prepared statement that's a two-page statement for you. Sir, um, if, I assure if you, can you that get I it in two minutes, that'll be fine. It is not. I don't know how much longer it is. I haven't timed it, but I'm certain well, it's well, slightly I'll, over that. Our clerk will time, is timing it for you. So when the buzzer stops, uh, we will ask. And you can pass those things to us. Just pass those to us, and we can. She, yeah, just give them to Mr. Mayor, <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem and members of the council. I'm Coke Ariel, uh, and that is my wife Kate with me. We live at 351, hello? We live at 351 West Main Street in downtown Durham. Um, I'd like again to speak for both myself and my wife and tell you that once again I'm asking you to grant us some relief to the residents of downtown Durham who accepted your proposition to park for free if we would come and build our buildings here. Um, I do want to thank those of you who have listened to us in and, and person and been sympathetic to our cause, particularly Gene Brown and Don Moffat who have spent time with us. Uh, and I thank Steve too for coming around and talking. As I have stated previously, the proposed new parking fees as well as seeming to turn your back on your previous agreement are in fact a hardship for a number of us. Purchasing a place to live is not a decision to be taken lightly, nor f neither financially or emotionally, nor is it easily reversed. We undertook to do so based in large part on our understanding that the city would grant us free parking. For Kate and myself, these fees are a hardship and we question now our ability to live downtown. Today in looking at char at in looking to charge residents to park, you seem to be guided by the thought that by not doing so, the city will lose money. 
I would suggest to you that granting free parking to us has in fact increased the city's coffers on every hand. How many paying customers did the city have 10 or 20 years ago before it granted resident free parking? I can tell you it had far fewer than you have now. Granting free parking has not cost you money, but has had the opposite effect of increasing the number of paying customers. How many of them would be here today if you had not first asked us to come and make them want to be here? How much money were you making from property taxes on downtown Durham that long ago? My property taxes have gone up 900%. Have not all property taxes gone up? What realtor wanted to handle property then? Sir, your time is up. Madam, I truly object. You gave our opponents more than an hour in their in their uh, proposal, what, and what we would seriously talking? like to read this. Sir, what opponents are you referring to? You're the only persons who are here tonight. I believe it was the Kimley Horn proposal that we were uh, found objection with. Sir, um, I told you at the beginning you had two minutes, and I would respectfully ask that you would honor that. Uh, and we do have the rest of your remarks here. Thank you. Council members, we have before us, um, Mr. Moffitt, did you want to speak to this for a couple of minutes? Uh, thank you. I'll just take a moment and say that, um, as, as I've said to each of you, um, I do think that uh, when we look at uh, what has been shown as to be the cost of the downtown parking if we gave discounts it's actually an increase in income to the city over what we currently get and um, when this when we're charging full rates we're going to be asking 130 people to pay an additional hundred thousand dollars a year um, towards to the city uh, and these are people who are already paying 12 percent higher property tax rate than we pay and um, so I did think, as I um, said in the work session, I think a 10-year um, uh, phase-in period at half the market rate um, it, it gives them a much more substantial opportunity to adjust and um, I think is reasonable and fair, and, um, and I'll leave it at that. Are there other comments by council members? Mr. Shaw. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> Excuse me. To me, the, the difficulty here, uh, which I've discussed now several times, with the, we've all discussed with our city attorney, uh, I know that for me, I'm, I am, uh, I, I would be very supportive of what Don has proposed or something like it for the uh, people who I consider to be the, what we've been calling the pioneers. So they're roughly 21 of those, I believe. But uh, it's my understanding that that is not a legal option that is available to us. Um, and I, I'm not, uh, so uh, I am, I don't think that the people that came down after Lanier started uh, doing this in 08 are, um, I, I, don't, I don't think that that benefit should be extended to them. So uh, that is, that's the problem that I'm having with this. Um, uh, and uh, I, I w I'd wonder if our city attorney could speak to that and uh, again and uh, explain what the problem is. Thank you, Councilman Schull. Uh, the issue is making sure that every similarly situated individuals are treated uh, the same. Um, when we first started looking at this, I had made the suggestion that you not make any differentiation between current residents and future residents. and. Um, based on conversations that we had at that particular work session, we took a look at the local legislation that we have that's unique to Durham. Um, and um, I won't say anything changed other than, you know, as we were looking at the interpretation of it and how it could be read and whether it's defensible, we did come back to uh, the administration and, and make the recommendation that we could also support a, um, a distinction between current residents, all current residents, um, going and then going forward future residents if you wanted to make that distinction uh, where we struggle with is an idea of uh, in 2014 
determining in 2007 or 2008 that that's going to be the bright line test and residents that came here before then will be treated one way and residents who came here after then will be treated another way. You're talking about essentially retroactively defining what the program is and I just think that that would be arbitrary and capricious and would uh, not withstand a, any legal challenge. Uh, so whatever it is that you do, our recommendation is that you treat everyone, all residents who are currently here the same. Uh, and not make any distinctions, uh, you know, looking back uh, a few years. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I know that uh, there's been an issue raised about the uh, possibility of uh, people uh, in the, uh, the um, Corcoran Street lot using the, uh, ha having the uh, surface, surface lot price instead of the Deck, deck price, and I wondered if uh, our uh, staff could comment on that possibility. Mark Aronson, Transportation. The, the Corker Street deck actually operates as one facility. That's why we historically have never charged uh, different rates for whether people park in the surface lot or the, the deck, there's one rate that's that historically has been charged in that facility and people can choose whether they park in the surface lot or the deck, but the way the deck is configured or where the facility, the parking facility is configured, it operates as one. We don't really have a way to operationally distinguish between the, uh, uh, how we handle the, the surface, so we've always treated it as one and charged it at the deck rate. I just want to comment on that briefly. Um, the, the problem is, of course, is that many of the residents who live along Main Street uh, don't want to park in the deck. They want to be able to see their cars at night because of the increased risk of um, break-ins and theft. And so um, under our current setup, they have to pay an increased price to park on the surface lot. And so what I had suggested previously was that um, for those, for our residents who are, want to park in, who have a stated desire to park in a surface lot, that they pay a surface lot price. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I'd like to ask the our city attorney, I'm a little, just a little confused here. Uh, two work sessions ago, I raised the, because I did not know this would actually become or end up becoming a legal issue. And so I suggested to our very fine and esteemed attorney do what uh, attorneys are supposed to do in something like this, and that's to find a loophole, a legal le loophole. Uh, and so I guess option two, Mark, what we're referring to here this evening um, is somewhat of a compromise that uh, a monthly parking rate will be at half the market rate for the next three years. Uh, so the question though I would ask is why is this legal as opposed to last month when we discussed it, uh, Mr. Attorney, you were, seemed to be a little dubious about doing anything legal. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if you, you worded that correctly. That, um, you're right. The, the, that the, the issue specifically was who is going to pay what? And uh, my initial reaction was, every down whatever you define as downtown resident they should all pay the same whether they've been here since 1988 or whether they come here in 2016 they should all pay the same rate uh, based on the comments that you had raised i took another look at the um particularly the local legislation because that's real that is the thing that allows us to do something different otherwise we don't have the ability to uh to to make you know 
changes to who was going to pay what based on where they, they live, uh, but this particular legislation allows us to do that. Um, and and our, our recommendation then is if you want to, to have a quote unquote pioneer rate going forward or some sort of discount recognizing the, um, the contributions that have been made, then treat all current residents a certain way for this phase out um, uh, plan and, um, and then future residents would come in and pay the market rate. So once this is passed, people who are coming in in six months would pay a different rate than the people who have been there. So it's, it's really just a, a trying to make sure that, that, that I can make a, a straight argument uh, that, that folks are similarly situated going forward and not to be in a situation where, quite frankly, if, again, in 2014, if you determine that January 1, 2008 is the cutoff date, um, then, then the challenge would be, what about January the 2nd, 2008? What's the, why is, it seems arbitrary and capricious to me. I couldn't make a, 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 an argument that I think would be a winning argument if we got challenged, and I suspect that we would, given the number of residents that have come in to downtown Durham since that time. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions or concerns? If not, uh, I will entertain a motion to approve or not uh, this item. Yes, sir. I want to move to have the uh, fee be half of the uh, proposed fee for a period of five years. Half of the uh, the regular fee. I'm not sure the exact wording on that. Is there a second? Oh, second. Councilmember Shule, can you repeat your motion, please? Sir? I hope I can, Madam, okay. Madam Clerk. <laughs> uh, I, I would move that we, uh, I think a better way to say this, and you all can help me, that we would do option two, but we would uh, have this over a, a five-year period. Maybe someone can help me improve that. I, I think that's through December 31st, 2019. No, I'm sorry, it's through uh, December 31st, 2018. And then I'm assuming that they would go to the market rates, whatever those rates would be. Yes. January 1st. That, that would be my intention. 2019. Yes. So we have a motion or a second. Ms. Katati? It just for clarification, is that an additional 50,000 or additional 100,000? I'm still not clear on whether it's one year or two years. It sounds like we're adding the motion adds two years at a discounted rate and where the, uh, the cost difference between the discounted rate and the full rate is approximately 50,000 per year. So that would be $100,000 for two additional years. And this 100,000, an additional $100,000, right. yes. That, my intention was the two years. You know, I think that these folks have, uh, especially those who have been down here a long time are taking a couple of different hits here. Uh, I would prefer that if we could separate them from our, the rest of the folks who were, uh, who have moved in downtown, but it doesn't seem that we can, and so I think this is a reasonable compromise. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, would you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you very much. There is no other business to come before this body. I will now declare it adjourned. Call, call the, uh